Oh my god, this is so cute! What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. Today's video is a really exciting one because I'm actually gonna be trying out some very viral TikTok makeup products. I thought I would put these to the test because I am literally sick of seeing these on my feed and everyone raving about them and I haven't tried any of them yet. So I thought I would purchase a few of the most like known, most viral products right now and I thought I would try them out for you guys in this video. So if you guys have been considering getting and trying any of these products make sure you guys watch this video all the way through to help you make the decision if you guys haven't seen my two previous tiktok related videos where i tried out some very viral beauty hacks and make sure you guys check the eye also if you're new here make sure you guys subscribe come and join the dinosaur family i would love to have you here but without further ado if you guys want to see how some of these viral tiktok beauty products perform then let's get on into the video All right guys, so the very first product I'm gonna be trying out today is actually a foundation. Now this foundation is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Powder Foundation. This product has literally taken the whole foundation world by storm. Literally everyone and their mom is talking about this product and there's so many TikToks going around showing you how full coverage this foundation is even though it's powder. Although I've seen the evidence, it's a little bit hard to believe that this little thing right here that's a powder foundation will achieve a very, very flawless like super super blurred kind of finish so I thought I would try it for myself I honestly love the L'Oreal infallible foundation like in the liquid form so I thought you know I might like this however I do have to say my skin is quite dry especially right now because I've had an allergic reaction to a skincare product so I feel like this could potentially look a little bit dry in some spots of my face so ignore that but at the same time I feel like it will be a good test for it to see if it actually looks drying on a dry skin all right guys so I've brought you in a little bit closer so we can see how this applies to my face. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the sponge that comes with this foundation because that seems to be what everyone else is doing. I'm gonna be real with you guys, a lot of the time I don't use these little sponges because I just feel like they're a little bit gimmicky and a lot of the time they're not that great. But for the purpose of this, I am gonna just dip in with the sponge and just pick up a generous amount of that foundation onto the sponge. As you guys can see, I've got quite uneven skin on my jaw right now. I've got quite a lot of like texture, but also some old and new acne scarring. So let's see if this will actually cover them up well because I feel like recently I've really been having to use a high coverage foundation to cover this up. So are we ready to put this foundation to the test? Three, two, one. Hmm, okay. Oh my god, I'm a little bit shook. That has covered it quite well in like just a few swipes. I feel like the shade of this foundation is not the best match for me. I mean, if you look at it compared to my neck, it looks a little bit orangey. I did order this online on Boots and I couldn't find what shade that I would potentially be. So I just ended up picking up this one in the shade Vanilla and it is a little bit too orange for me. Let's also try this side. I've got a bit of redness on my cheeks. So let's just see how it covers up. I do have to say it is really giving me that super kind of blurred, flawless sort of finish. When I saw this on TikTok and like how blurring it was of the skin, I was a bit skeptical because I mean, a lot of people nowadays use filters to blur their skin. So honestly, I wasn't really sure. But now that I'm trying it out, it really does give you that in real life blurred kind of effect to your skin, which is amazing. I'm going over this patch here, which is very, very dry. It's where I've been kind of trying to dry out my slight acne and it's not really clinging too much to it, which I'm really surprised about. I mean, you can definitely tell that that's a dry patch there, but it's not like making it look worse and accentuating it, which is good. I'm now just applying it into my nose area where I get a lot of redness. And again, I'm always very dry there. So let's see how that will look. Okay, I see a bit of texture for sure, but it's not the worst, like not the worst at all, considering we're using a powder foundation here. I guess I'm just gonna finish off the rest of my face and then I'll give you guys a verdict of how I think it looks. All right guys, so the foundation is now on. This is what it looks like on my skin. I actually feel like it's a pretty good foundation for a powder foundation, which I never really thought I would like. Just because I do have combination skin, although I get quite oily in my T-zone, I do get quite dry patches on my jaw, around my nose a little bit as well. But this 
looks really nice. It has covered up most of my like blemishes and flaws. I mean, you can definitely see a little bit of like that purple scarring kind of peeking through, but I think most of it is just the fact that it's like scabbing over. But I feel like no foundation would probably cover that without some color correcting underneath. So I feel like this one has done pretty good. So in total out of 10, I think I'm gonna give this like a nine because although it is very beautiful, it still is a tiny, tiny bit drying, especially on my dry patches. So I'm gonna give it a nine. All right guys, the next product I'm trying out is actually a highlighter. This is from a brand called Kaja or Kaja. I'm not too sure how to pronounce it, but I'm pretty sure it's a Korean brand and I had to do some bits to try and get this to ship to the UK. This is the Roll-On Highlighting Balm. Honestly, this brand has the cutest, most inventive kind of products, which is so unique and I've seen so much of them on TikTok. So this is basically a little roller highlighter. It literally looks like a tray of paint and this is how you apply it with this little roller. I don't know about you guys, but I love renovating. I love painting. So when I saw this, I just knew I had to get this. I've just realized it actually has its own roller on the inside and then this is the little spare. So that's pretty good. This brand is not cheap by any means. This was between 20 and 30 pounds. I'm pretty sure just to get this highlighter. So I would say that's more on the high end side, but this is so cute. So this is the highlighter I've gone for. It just opens up like this and it is literally the most gorgeous, yellowy kind of shimmer highlighter. I mean, I guess all there's left to do is to just dip into this. So let's do it together. Oh my God, this is so cute. I never thought I would have a roller highlighter like this. I'm noticing that I have to press quite hard to pick up any of the product on my actual little roller. Oh my God, the color of this highlighter is like dual chrome. What the hell? I did not expect that. So you guys can see obviously this golden kind of highlighter shade, but when you swatch it, it has like pink reflexes. Can you guys see that pink reflex on my ring finger? That is crazy. Okay, I guess all I'm gonna do is that she just roll this on my face. Is it showing up? I feel like that hasn't really done much. I mean, it's kind of there, but it's very sheer. I'm just gonna keep trying to layer it up so that we can get a nice sort of blinding highlight. Because right now, it just looks very, very natural. Maybe that's how it's meant to be worn. I'm not too sure, but it kind of gives me that like glass skin kind of look, which is definitely very popular in the kind of like Korean beauty world, the glass skin. Okay, I'm starting to think <laughs> that this little roller is a bit of a gimmick. It's not really giving me the result that I want. So what I'm thinking of doing is just dipping my finger into this and actually just applying it with my finger because it's seem to be way more pigmented like that. I mean, let's just give it a go. <gasps> Whoa. Do you guys see that? That is beautiful. That literally has that same golden slash pinky kind of sheen to it as it did on my finger when I swatched it. I think the best way to go is to literally just use your hand or a brush because the roller, as cute as it is, it does seem a bit gimmicky because it's not really picking up much product. So yeah, my final verdict, the product is definitely really cute. I really liked the idea of it. However, I do think it's a little bit gimmicky. It doesn't really apply and distribute the product all that well, unless you're going for that very natural kind of glass skin look. But if you like your highlighter a little bit more blinding, a little bit more present like me, then you're definitely gonna wanna apply this product with your finger. All right guys, the next product I'm trying is another one from the brand called Kaja. This again has been very viral because of the way that it kind of looks. I guess it's mostly for the packaging. This is called the Bouncy Matte and Shimmer Eyeshadow Trio. They do these in loads of different colors. And the reason why this has gone absolutely viral is because of how cute the packaging is. So here is the packaging. Look how adorable and tiny it is. I absolutely love this. If you're like me and you're a sucker for packaging, you will appreciate this because it's actually very clever design. This is basically a stackable eyeshadow so you can open up one level or you can open up two levels and reveal all the shadows underneath 
each kind of level. I went for the more neutral one. There was some crazy, crazy colors, but I thought I would go for something that I would actually wear all the time. So I'm just gonna take my Roxy X Revolution All You Need brush set, and I'm just gonna use these brushes to apply the shades. So I'm going for the middle shade first. I guess I will just do a bit of an everyday kind of look, nothing too crazy. So let's see how these shadows actually perform. Okay, so this is, I guess, more of a transition shade. It's I mean, it's definitely showing up, but it's not super, super pigmented or anything. So I'm just gonna apply this to both of my creases just as a standard kind of base. Okay, I'm moving on to the darker shade, which is the bottom one. It's kind of that chocolatey kind of vibe. I'm gonna use this on my smaller fluffy brush from the All You Need brush set, and I'm just gonna pick that up very lightly, tap off the excess, and then I'm gonna place this in the outer corner just to kind of deepen up the look. We're just going for a natural kind of smoky eye today. Okay, so that shadow is definitely showing up. I mean, it's not exactly the most pigmented brown I've ever, ever used, but it's working. There's not really too much fallout, so... I guess it's okay. I feel like these shades are definitely a bit more buildable. So if you really wanna get that super dark and pigmented kind of effect, you definitely wanna build it up. Okay, so that's the sort of base finished. I'm now gonna take the shimmer shade, which I'm most excited about. Let's just do a little swatch. Oh my God, that is so pretty. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna use my finger first and kind of just go over the inner part of my lid. And then we'll use a smaller brush to kind of Get it in there. It is a really buttery and creamy formula for this shadow. This actually reminds me a lot of the Foiled Frenzy formula from my palette with Revolution. It's got that super creamy, but almost like wet look to it. I'm just gonna do the same to the other side. I'm just applying it in the center of the lid and then kind of blending it into the inner corner as well. Okay, there's a little bit more fallout on that one. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on camera, but got quite a lot of shimmer under my eye now, which is not great. I've now got sparkly under eye to hide my under eye bags. So that's just what I wanted. I mean, when I did my foundation, I guess I never really put any concealer on anyway. So this kind of works in my favor. Okay, now that I fixed my face, I'm gonna move on to some eyeliner before we try a very viral mascara. I'm sure you guys already know what it's gonna be. But for my eyeliner, I'm just using my Roxy X Revolution Ultra Precise. Felt tip liner. This is literally the liner I use every single day. So I'm just gonna do a very basic wing with this. Nothing too crazy. All right guys, so I finished my eyeliner. This is what it looks like. I've just made it super thin at the lash line so you guys could see my lashes the best. So the mascara we're putting to the test today is a very viral mascara that has literally blown up on TikTok. And that is the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. This is what it looks like. I'm a really big fan of Maybelline mascaras. I haven't used them in a long time though. So this is gonna be a bit of an interesting one. First of all, this is the wand. It's actually very, very thin, which already is making me a little bit skeptical because a lot of the time, thin wands like this literally do nothing for my lashes. My lashes are personally very straight. They're not really the shortest, but they need a lot of help to look good. So with all the hype going around with this mascara, I'm really counting on it. I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply my mascara to one eye without curling my lashes, and then the other one, I'll curl my lashes and then apply it. So firstly, I'll just do my regular mascara on this eye as I normally would. I don't always curl my lashes, so we'll see how this will look. Okay, so first things first, I'm noticing it's very separating. Like I can literally see every single lash being separated and not clumped. In terms of distributing the mascara onto the actual hairs, it's doing a good job, but it's also very, very slow. So I feel like with this mascara, you're gonna have to like work it up and build it up as you go. Sometimes when you're using a super thick wanded mascara, you can kind of just do like two swipes and you're pretty much done. Whereas with this, I can just tell it's gonna take a while for them to get to the sort of look that I want. So that's how the first eye is looking so far. I feel like I've given it about two coats there. As you guys can see, my lashes are pretty much non-existent, like you can literally not even see them. They're just pointing straight towards the camera. As you guys can see right now, my lashes look pretty mediocre. They don't look amazing. I mean, you can see I've got mascara on, but do they look super long and voluminous? 
Definitely not. I'm gonna do a few more coats on top of this. I never really do multiple coats of mascara on my lashes just because I don't really like that crispy feeling. But for the sake of this test, I just wanna see how long and how volumized I can actually get them with this tiny thin wand. Okay, do you know what? That second coat is really where it kind of starts to happen. I'm gonna show you guys a close up of how my lashes look right now. Obviously this is the uncurled eye and you guys can see the comparison between the two two eyes, the one that has mascara and the one that doesn't. I'm definitely still not blown away, but it is looking better than it did when I started out. Let's try the third coat. Hopefully this will be where the magic happens. Okay, I would say that actually is doing something. I think the more coats you apply, the better it looks, but my eyelash doesn't feel crispy. It doesn't feel clumped. And honestly, it doesn't feel like I've got mascara on either. I'm now gonna curl my lashes on my left eye, do the same thing, literally apply three coats and we'll see the difference. Okay, so I've just finished doing this eye and honestly, I can definitely see the difference I think this mascara does really work as long as you've curled your lashes But I thought it would be really interesting to see the comparison of how well it does without having to curl your lashes as well Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this mascara about a 7 I hate to say it, but as much as people are hyping this up, I mean, it's good, but it's not as good as people are claiming. I mean, maybe if you've already got amazing, super long lashes, it's gonna do wonders for you. But for someone like me, who just has average lashes, they're not too long, they're not very curled, this is just a mediocre mascara. I feel really bad to say it because I really wanted this to work for me. Like, I really wanted it to be amazing, just like everyone else was saying. But I mean, my lashes are the result, so. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of this mascara. Does it look good on my lashes? Let me know your thoughts. Now moving on to my lips. This is a very interesting product that I'm trying out and it's this. Honestly, I don't even know what to call this. This is from a brand called Faux Mummy. Faux Mummy? Faux Mummy? I don't know. But it's called the Tattoo Lipstick. You guys may have seen this a few times on TikTok and in all honesty, I feel like it could be a gimmick, but I thought I would try it anyway because it looks fun. So this is what the packaging looks like. It basically looks a little bit like a cigarette box. It opens up like this and inside you get loads and loads of q-tips. You can call this whatever you like, q-tips, cotton buds, whatever, but basically these have lip tin inside them. This is how they come packaged. So there is 20 inside this little package. I actually got this off of eBay. I think it was like six pounds. So basically what you do is you rip off one of them. As these are one-time use, I would definitely say they're not great for the environment. Literally, there is so much plastic wastage with these, which is why I don't want you guys to get them. I just got them purely for this video and to kind of bust the hype around it and just see if it's even worth the hype. But in general, there's so many amazing lip tints out there that don't come in super wasteful packaging like this. What you wanna do is you wanna snap off this one here with the red sort of line across it like that. And then all of the sort of like tint goes into the bottom of this one. And once you've done that, you literally just apply it to your lips. I'm kind of scared it's gonna leak out the other side. But let's just do it. Ooh, this is a pretty color. Oh my God, that is so red. Okay, so that is the lip tint applied to my lips. It is actually very red. This was meant to be like a pink kind of color. So as you're applying this, you wanna be quite quick because the tint on the end of this Q-tip dries out pretty quick. I'm curious, if I kiss the back of my hand, will it transfer? Let's test it. No transfer, that's good. So obviously these are called the tattoo lipstick for a reason. I don't know how long this is gonna last on my lips, but I will keep you guys updated in the comments of this video. But yeah, I really like it. It feels really lightweight. It doesn't feel like there's anything on my lips and yeah, it looks nice. However, I know that there's so many other lip tints on the market that do the same thing that aren't in a gimmicky Q-tip. I mean, the packaging is definitely really interesting and unique, but it is also very wasteful. So honestly, don't buy it. All right, guys, so that is everything for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing me test out these very viral beauty products that are all over TikTok. If you guys are sick of seeing these products on your feed, I hope this video helped to basically let you guys know how it works and let you make the decision whether to get it or not. If you guys haven't seen my previous two videos not that long ago where I tried out a bunch of beauty TikTok hacks, then make sure you guys click the I right there and also the description. But that is all from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.
Mwah. Thank you.